I'll be giving from the perspective of Malaysia and ASEAN and to a certain extent Asia as well, from the lenses of a ministry that's in charge of trade, investment and the industry. For Malaysia, um, you know, we have been in the semiconductor industry for the last 50 years. Uh, in fact, it is so important and strategic to our economy that 40% of Malaysian total export is from the semiconductor industry and we have a global market share of around 13% and therefore uh, we are really very important part of the global supply chain. So I'm going to just focus on the supply chain, the geopolitics, the talent, which is important, the global economy, and also, in a way, the infrastructure that's required and going forward and about sustainability, etc. So first of all, maybe from our view, uh, where Malaysia stands and where we are in Southeast Asia, we have seen the realignment of supply chain, especially in the semiconductor, in a very big way. To give you a sense, in the last four years, we've seen semiconductor investment into the region increase by nearly five times. It is major. Uh, from our data points, it started just before COVID. In fact, COVID accelerated it when there were issues about factory closures. Because actually, semiconductor, if I'm not mistaken, 90% of the manufacturing of the semiconductor chips is in Asia. When there was uh, factory closures, etc., medical devices, cars, even toys, you stop manufacturing it because the supply chain disrupted. So they were talking about realignment of the supply chain, looking at the resiliency of the supply chain, the security of the supply chain, that people are talking about reshoring, friendshoring, onshoring, because of the risks to the manufacturers. And then come, of course, the geopolitics. The trade tension between two superpowers, various barriers of entry, tariff increase, companies especially being focused on the commercial viability, focus on profitability, have to relook at where they are as well. Then come the talk about China plus one. In fact, when we were in Europe, it was Europe plus one, Germany plus one, even US as well. They are diversifying, they are de-risking, uh, ensuring that their supply chain, and I think at the end of the day, it's also about commercial viability, the increase in costs, the increase of energy prices. So they look at region, where is the best place for them to then diversify or de-risk their portfolio. So one of the areas uh, when you talk about geopolitics, that's why we see in ASEAN, Southeast Asia, a group of 10 countries, they have looked at positioning themselves as a neutral block. It is a big block, fifth largest economic block, population of 680 million people, GDP of 3.7 trillion US dollars. When people look at that block, not just as a neutral block, but also as a block that they can also expand their markets in. GDP growth around 4 to 5%, so it is one of the fastest growing economic blocks as well. And being neutral and stable and peaceful also means that it is safe uh, for them to then expand their business out of China or out of Germany or out of Europe. The um, US has been a major investor in this area. In fact, for Malaysia, our biggest investor in semiconductor comes from the West, from the United States, especially in Europe. We have been in this field for a while. So we have built global companies as well who used to supply to the semiconductor multinational. They are now they themselves a global player. And therefore, the talent pool is there. And lastly, the infrastructure. The electricity is important, water as well, and ensuring that the logistics of it, because most of this, when you look at the supply chain, they're not talking about physical supply chain, they're not talking about ships, but they're talking about air freight, they're talking about uh, airports, etc. You need to look at the future, where it's heading. Uh, I think we can have an open discussion on this because everyone has a different view, different perspective of this because all countries now, if you look at incentives that are coming in from India, looking at Japan, of course Taiwan being a major player, even in Europe. So every country now are looking, I mean the US with the CHIPS Act and various other countries also have regulations and guidelines, but they are trying to rebuild this industry or building the industry for strategic reasons and technology is going to be key and if you look at where we are today, I think that growth is going to be more than that because adoption of the technology with advancement of AI, advancement of various other new technologies, we're talking about EV, etc. We think this year is going to be a good year. It's another tech upcycle and therefore investment is going to be key, uh, trade is going to be key and we hope that this semiconductor supply chain will then benefit in terms of the country's economy and growth uh, as well. For me, looking at it objectively, what we need to know is where the technology is going to go. And we also need to understand the importance of the supply chain. And like it or not, if I was a company, I was in the private sector before, you do not want to be in one region. Uh, being, that is the, the truth. Yes, of course, selfishly, we want it all to be in Asia. Uh, like I said, it's already 90% of semiconductor is in Asia for now. 
But going forward, given the size of the pie that is growing, it is okay to share because at the end of the day, I think there are comparative advantage of each country and there are experience in companies that lies in the talent and the infrastructure. So you need, for example, most of these companies, the multinational companies especially, they have their RE100 targets as well. So they will need to look at nations that are able to supply them that green power, that renewable energy. And you cannot get to the end game if you just focus in one or two regions. And I think it's good politically as well, geopolitics wise, uh, and for the security and resilience supply chain to spread it out. And you are seeing there are companies in our region already working in the States, supplying, especially on the assembly and test on the back end. The equipment are actually coming from Asia into Europe. Of course, the wafer fab, the, the IC design stuff are a bit more advanced, technical, in terms of ability to do that. But I think at the end of the day, it's important to start not just focusing in one uh, region. And we are definitely, we are ourselves, our companies in our region are also diversifying out of the region.